Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to the service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Bow Repair in Beaconsfield. But as usual, on Wednesday, the broadcast coming to you from the rectory in Verdun. As you can see, uh, I brought out my uh, Blessed Virgin Mary uh, statue. So today must be a Marian feast, and it is. It's uh, actually tomorrow. Uh, today would be the eve of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, one of, uh, one of several uh, feast days uh, dedicated to uh, Mother Mary throughout the year. Today we'll be using uh, the uh, U.S. Episcopal Prayer Book, 1979, uh, Rite 1, the traditional language uh, service, and the link is there in the refresh. Discussion, the event page. <clears throat> Our service begins on page 61. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. This is the day, O God, thine also the night. Thou hast established the moon and the sun. Thou hast fixed all the boundaries of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Continue with the confession on page 62. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We say together the O Gracious Light, Fos Hilaron, on page 64. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 132, on page 785 of the prayer book. We will say it responsibly by half verse. 132. Lord, remember David. In all the hardship he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord, and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark we heard it was in Eph Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Jearim. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. 
Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake. Do not turn away the face of, of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. It sure he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body. Who they sit upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and, and my testimonies that I shall teach them. Their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions. And satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priest with salvation. And her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But as for him, his crown will shine. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. And the first lesson is from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 61. Verses 9 through 11. Isaiah 61, 9 through 11. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a, himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoot, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Here endeth the... Old Testament lesson. We, we continue with the Magnificat, Song of Mary, on page 65. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek, he hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Our Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke. Luke 1, 26 through 33. Luke 1, 26 through 33. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give, him to, the, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Here in the, the Gospel lesson. We'll say together the Nunc Dimittis, 
on page, Song of Simeon on page 66. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'll read the, um, not the really biography, but the expl explanation of this saint's day, this feast day. The Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 8th September. A legend dating from the 2nd century tells this story about the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Once upon a time, there was a Jewish couple named Joachim and Anne. They were elderly, and their neighbors approached, reproached them for not having any children. But God heard Anne's lament and sent an angel to her. You shall conceive and bear, and your offspring shall be spoken in, of in all the world. Anne responded, As the Lord my God lives, if I bear a child, whether male or female, I will bring it as a gift to the Lord my God, and it shall serve him all the days of its life. And so it came to pass that Anne conceived, and when the time was fulfilled, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Mary. Both parents vowed to dedicate their child to the service of God, and when she was three years old, they presented her in the temple at Jerusalem. And the high priest placed Mary on the third step of the altar, and the Lord God put grace upon the child, and she danced for joy with her feet, and the whole house of Israel loved her. Such is the legend of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and we continue to tell the story because it bears witness to a deeper truth of faith, that Mary herself was the daughter of Israel's hope, and the child whose offspring would fulfill the longing of the whole family of creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are three, there are only three nativities in the Christian calendar. Now, there are many saints' days, uh, and usually saints' days are the day of the saint's death. So, the, the feast day of St. Paul or St. Peter, uh, those are the days when they were martyred, or, you know, some other saint, you know, I don't know, St. Thomas Aquinas, for example, who wasn't martyred. Uh, it's just the day that they died, and that's the normal way that saints' days are observed. It's the day of the death of the saint, because that's there when they become a saint in heaven. Uh, usually, uh, saints' birthdays are not celebrated. Uh, there's only three birthdays that are um, observed in the Christian calendar. Jesus, of course, Christmas, uh, on June 24th, the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, or as we know in, in Quebec, the Saint-Jean-Baptiste, Saint uh, and the last one, not least, is uh, the Nativity, Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is tomorrow. So that means that these these figures are more uh, have a special place in the in the Christian calendar. Uh, Mary, of course, because she is the vessel through whom the incarnation happened, and John the Baptist because he pointed the the way. He showed the way to um, the Christ. So those, they're kind of similar in that respect, uh, in that whereas the other saints that we have, the apostles or martyrs and other saints throughout history, they came as followers of Christ. They were called by Jesus or were followers of Christ in later times. Both Mary and uh, John the Baptist were forerunners of Jesus. And they brought and they paved the way, each in their own way. John the Baptist by uh, 
pointing to Jesus, preparing the way, uh, tilling the soil, and then say, this is not, it is not me who you're seeking, it is him. And of course, Mary literally paved the way by bringing Jesus into the world. I've said, you know, there's, um, in the Protestant traditions, the uh, veneration of Mary kind of fell by the wayside, as it often is the case when there's, um, uh, when some sort of correction happens, oftentimes there's, there's a tendency to go in the opposite direction. So, of course, uh, in medieval Catholicism, uh, the veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary had sometimes reached the point that it was uh, beyond, beyond or, or more than uh, that of, of Christ. Because the, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary was seen as more accessible. Uh, that uh, she is seen as an intercessor, as one who's maybe... Uh, you know, as the mother, some sometimes it depends on your mother, right? But sometimes the mother is more approachable than the father, and some people, in their personal piety, uh, felt more comfortable addressing themselves in prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And of course, the Protestant reformers saw that that was uh, there had been too much emphasis placed on Mary, and many of them went in the opposite direction and pretty much. Uh, obliterated any, any special place for Mary, uh, especially in more, um, more extreme Protestant traditions, Baptists and whatever, you know, it's just, she just considered a woman, and that's it, you know. Uh, she gave birth to Jesus, and then, you know, we're done with her. Um, I think both are a bit, you know, uh, you know these are ex extreme positions, and Yes, she shouldn't be given, uh, shouldn't be treated as, as almost a th fourth person of the Trinity, but also she was not just uh, any, any woman. That's not just a, you know, a, a, a footnote. Oh, she happened to give birth to Jesus. Um, what are we to make of these legendary accounts? You know, that's... These came about through Christian piety that wanted to fill in the details. The Bible has, doesn't really say uh, a lot about you know, where she came from. Uh, and of course, Christian piety being what it, what it is, especially in the Middle Ages when people wanted to really flesh out everything. Of course, these, these, these stories uh, arose Perhaps they're based on some sort of fact. We don't know. Uh, but it's, it testifies to the, the importance of Mary. And that, that it, her, uh, her role is not just uh, random. Just she happened to give birth to Jesus and that's it. Uh, these, these stories... The, the purpose of these these legends, maybe they're true, is you know, is that she was chosen by God to be this vessel. It wasn't just a you know an accident. It wasn't random. She was chosen uh, to be to bear the Christ to bear God. You know, in in the Orthodox tradition, we could say the Theotokos, which means the God bearer, literally. Um, and of course, along this line of reasoning is where the Catholic doctrine of um, the Immaculate Conception of Mary came about. Um, it's not one that, that we necessarily hold to, uh, but uh, in the Catholic Church it's taught that Mary was conceived without sin. The logic being... To be, in order to be able to bear God, she had to be conceived without sin. Uh, that's uh, not, not 
the doctrine that Anglicans are are required to 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 hold. Um, but it does it does point to the fact that she was chosen to bear the Christ. And this is not just important kind of in historically or metaphysically, because Mary is the first disciple of Christ. She is the first to say yes to the gospel message. And you heard me say before that Mary Magdalene was the first preacher of the gospel because she announced the resurrection. She attested the resurrection. But Mary is the first disciple because Mary, mother of Jesus, is the, is the first disciple because she is the first to say yes. It's not, you know, you know, she has to, she responds to God's call to her. She responds. But first, she was chosen. Her response did not make it happen. God had chose her for this purpose, and she responded in the affirmative. And that's how she she came to bear Christ, the God incarnate within her body. She is the original and model disciple. Now, we may think we are not giving birth to uh, Christ. Not literally, but as followers of, as baptized followers of Christ, the light of Christ, God incarnate, is within us. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ is, is within us. We are Christ bearers. So it's not just like, like I said, not just a historical, you know, fact or whatever, or theological fact about Mary. Mary is the archetype for us all. Because God, God's, God chooses us. That's how grace works. It's not, we don't, we're not the cause of it. God chooses us. God chooses us to be bearers of the Christ within us and we respond in our and we respond to that to that call to us and then we we bear Christ within us we bear Christ to the world that's what it means to be a disciple of of Christ so you know we this is this this is something I think has been kind of neglected about the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, that kind of thinking of her only in her role in a certain time and place as bearing the you know giving birth to the historical Jesus, which is you know important, but it, her what she represents is the archetypal disciple the number one disciple that shows us how we are to be. God, God calls us for this purpose. And our example is Mary to say yes to God and to bear the light of Christ to the world around us. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to, not going to sing a hymn, but uh, Evgeny is going to sing for us uh, in Latin, Ave Maria, which is uh, not just a Catholic prayer, but it's literally from the Gospel of Luke, uh, from what we read today. Yes.
So what she's saying in, uh, in Latin, you probably know this prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The last part of that prayer is, was added later, but the first part is, is straight, out, straight out of the Gospel of Luke. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 66. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A on page 67. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we, being defended from the fear of all enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know thee as thou art revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of thy love. Amen. Eternal God, who reveal the mystery of your loving providence in the birth of Mary, the mother of our Lord, grant that we now, who now call her blessed may be clothed with the light of your new creation and rejoice with her in the radiance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now is our time for intercessory prayer. If you have requests for prayers of healing or other support, or thanksgiving, uh, type them in the comment section as we pray together. Holy God, God of light, God of life, God of love, we lift up to you all the suffering human family, the human family at war, human family stricken with disease, the human family infected with, with diseases of hate and, and prejudice. We pray for healing upon all that human family, an outpouring of your light on all creation. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, especially those in war zones in the East, the vulnerable, those who are displaced refugees, those who are fighting on the front lines, and those who are yet to be called. 
And we pray for the people of Russia that some way, somehow, the truth and light may penetrate through the dark veil of misinformation and propaganda. And that there may be deep and radical conversion within the leadership of that country. God of other mercy. Yeah. We pray for the needs of our parish, for our families and friends and loved ones. Pray for those in need of healing, mind, body, or spirit. We pray for Ian and Sandy, for Donna, for Irene, for Anne, for Susan. Cat. For Art and Lorna. And all those who are in need of healing at this time. I pray for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Those who are grieving the loss of human loved ones and pets as well. I pray for all who have died, especially those who have died this day, anywhere in the world. May light perpetual shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. Amen. We are praying for everybody who will be traveling to Tolosa for the International Peace Festival, and everybody who will be performing there. God of love and mercy. We pray for all who, those who are who are traveling, who are traveling to see family, traveling for for rest and restoration. We pray for all the clergy of our diocese as we return to a more active time of the year, as we come together in clergy conference soon. We pray for all our parishes, those who are struggling, those who are discerning a way forward, that there may be a revival in our parish and in all parishes of this diocese, especially as we come back to, to church this fall, we may, we may re-emerge from the pandemic time and return to active church life. God of love and mercy. We pray for a for an end to the despicable sin of racism that continues to plague the human family. We pray for an end to all types of bigotry sexism, homophobia, transphobia, religious discrimination, oppression of minorities. May we see the, the face of Christ in, in our neighbor and love each other accordingly. God of love and mercy. Pray for all of our leaders, leaders of our country, of our province, of our cities, leaders of the world, leaders in business, in religion, in academics, influencers. We pray that those who have power may use it for good. We pray for upcoming elections here in Quebec. We pray for wisdom. We pray for a, a spirit of inclusion and understanding.
spirit that transcends self-interest and economics and and seeks to, seeks inclusion of all those who live in this province we may live together in all our diversity god of love and mercy yeah. gracious god we pray for healing of our planet and inspiration of all members of the human family to do what is necessary take the difficult steps to protect this our only home and eat and take whatever meet whatever means necessary to stop and reverse climate change pray for a spirit of concern for the common good that transcends individual interest and economic immediacy. God of love and mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, we lift up to all these prayers that we have spoken aloud or whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Continue with the general thanksgiving on page 71. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised th through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer this evening. Uh, we will uh, once again uh, have evening prayer next went next Wednesday, same time, same place. Uh, the, the week after that, uh, we will not, and I'll. Uh, there will be three weeks where there will be no evening prayer, uh, but next week we will. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we uh, our services continue normally on Sunday, at ten o'clock. This Sunday is regular Sunday. On the eighteenth, September eighteenth will be our Back to Church Sunday. Uh, after the service, we will have uh, a barbecue. The church will provide uh, hamburgers and hot dogs and maybe corn. Uh, and we need all of you all to, to uh, bring other things, salads, desserts, uh, whatever. Uh, please sign up with the church office if you intend to bring something. And also, please RSVP with the church office if you haven't signed up at church already it's not you're not going to be turned away if you don't sign up in advance but we just want to have an idea of how many people are coming and i do hope that we'll have hope that all of you will will come for back to church sunday let's have a a big turnout as we uh we uh we make some major steps to start to step away from COVID and step back in to 
active church life. And this is the, the, the best time to do it, start with Back to Church Sunday. It will also be an intergenerational service, so a child-friendly service, as that will also be the, the kickoff of the Sunday school year. So with, uh, don't go away. Uh, to, uh, to close our service, Yevgeny will sing Salve Regina, Hail Holy Queen. It's customary for this, this to be sung at the end of evening prayer when it's, when it's sung. So she will sing that and that's when the service, that's the way the service will end. So don't go, uh, not over yet. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordia, Vita Dulce Do, et spes nostra salve. O te clamamus, exule spirieve, a te suspiramus, gementes et plentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Eia ergo, advocata nostra, illustus, 